All right, all right. What's going on? Good morning. Buenos dias. Bienvenidos a la gente de Game Cognation. So I just felt like speaking Spanish, you know, just because I can to a degree. Learned it in school. Learned it. Learned it. I learned it in Gamecock country. So what's up? But welcome to another Eminem show, episode 11, titled "We Ain't Ready." So uh, I guess you already know what that means. But um, I was going to talk about Marshall today, but that game just got canceled. So I'm not going to touch Marshall because I don't even know when we're going to make that game up. Maybe the bye week. Then I will retouch that subject. But nah. But let me get this started. Let me clear some things up. I've said some things on several of my podcasts, past podcasts, that was inaccurate. And I need to um, correct myself. For example, on my 1987 Gamecock football team podcast, I said that Sterling Sharp was in the NFL Hall of Fame. He is not in the NFL Hall of Fame. However, his brother, younger brother, Shannon Sharp, is, of course, y'all know, if y'all watch football in the 90s, you knew he was a great tight end in the 90s. And he's a, he's on um, Skip's Undisputed, Skip and Shannon's Undisputed, or Shannon and Skip, whatever, Undisputed. I watch it every day, but I know it's Undisputed and it comes on Fox Sports. And it's a, a great show, even though they talk about um, LeBron James and Tom Brady too much. But, um, hey, I mean, those are the two greatest players. So I guess you got to talk about them a lot. But um, anyway, but he is not in the Hall of Fame. He is in he is in um, the Packers Hall of Fame, and he's also in the Gamecock Football Hall of Fame, definitely because his jersey is retired. The number two, you will see that in Willie. You can see that in Willie B. Every game, and also, I said the 2001 Gamecock iconic entrance that. Georgia made look like cow brownies this past Saturday because it looked like it was about to be electric, but they came in and they beat that ass, meaning ours. Um, That actual entrance, I said, was Joe Morrison's idea. Gamecock coach from the 80s, from 83 to 89. Um, I said that um, the late Joe Morrison came up with that idea, but... That was Tommy Suggs that came up with that. And it was actually used when Jim Carlin was still the coach. So um, let me clear that up. That wasn't um, correct. Tommy Suggs is an old QB, old school QB for the Gamecocks, who was the QB for the only conference title winning Gamecock team in history. That good old 1969 ACC championship. But he was the QB for that team. So um, he's part of history and he's also um, does the game cop broadcast with Todd Ellis so let me clear that up and also we're still having issues with the snap snaps were still low so I thought we was going to get it correct in the process practice I came on the last podcast hyping it up saying we can get it down it ain't no problem but it was still a problem so I need to get them get those uh, daggone snaps up are you going to have some issues going through the, the rest of the season? Because it's going to take away time from the actual play develop. You know, take away time from the QB actually being able to get his eyes up, you know, and being able to analyze the play and being able to go through his progressions quicker. But, man, but at last, I was, along with many, highly, highly wrong of the Gamecocks pulling the upset well you know what I was semi wrong because in the podcast if you go back and listen to the Georgia edition podcast I said that the Gamecocks will be able to upset Georgia if they're able to run the football obviously that did not happen obviously what I said if we would have an ugly loss in this game is that the running game is going to fail if our running game fails then this game is going to fail and that's exactly what happened now, if Gamecocks would have played a great game and Georgia would have played a great game, we probably would have lost because Georgia is good. Like, Georgia's, Georgia can win a national championship this year. So they're that good. So high chance to. But, of course, you know, along with the other teams, they got a lot of good shots too. It's them, Georgia. I mean, it's Georgia, 
Alabama or it's Clemson or you throw a Penn State in there or but those three teams I think are the best has the best chance of winning the championship and Georgia may have the best chance out of all of them because of that massive offensive line the offensive line might actually be what um might be the key to being able to actually possibly um counteract that defensive line at Clemson in Cowtown. So um I'll leave it at that. But um yeah, but we ain't ready. We wasn't ready. We ain't about that life. Um, you know, aside with the Gamecocks not helping their own case. I mean they, we had a pick six of course off a drop pass but then other drop passes. Um they were you know what it was Georgia speed. Georgia speed their receivers were extremely fast. And we just couldn't keep up with them. But there was some positions. They were just out of position. Um, But so that that was another issue. But yeah, man, Georgia was too good for us that day. But um, yeah, man, we, there's a lot of winnable games left, though. So we got to, you know, it's like they said, we're going to really find out. And every week is a season. It's a good model to live by. It's a good model to have your team ingrained on. That's good for for them to ingrain that on their psyche, but now they have to actually put that into practice on the football field. So no game this week, but I guess we'll have to see and um, you know, the Saturday after next what the game is going to do against at Vandy. So that's how we're going to have to wait and see until every week is a season is, you know, some words, or is it really some true shit? So that's what we're going to. Uh, that, I'm going to leave it at that. Talking about that. But let me get back to what I was talking about. Well. Georgia, of course. I mean, us coming in with the five wide in that game. I mean, they, they thought it was going to work towards our advantage. But, I mean, you don't even have. Georgia doesn't even have to think about a threat of running the football. So they can just rush four and drop seven they're extremely athletic and talented defense can just drop seven and um or drop five or drop six which i think they probably did either to drop six or seven i don't know i didn't go back and analyze the tape or go back and look at how they uh, attacked when uh, south carolina came out in five wide but um of course that didn't work and it was a quick three and out but um yeah, man, like, that's just what we got to, I mean, that's just the honest truth. But you also got, I think we we all un- we all underestimated the caliber that Georgia had and those younger players that maybe didn't play a lot. But then some of those players who played, who backed up those starters that was on a national championship team, they're still upperclassmen. So I guess that's bad on my part, but not going and looking at, looking at that aspect of it, seeing what their class was because that experience and them being in that system a long time, even though they didn't play a lot, they were more than ready to compete and and, um, impose their will on us and do what they had to do to get out of there with a solid victory and get on with the rest of their season while they try to make it to the playoff. But I get it. I mean, South Carolina looked poor Um, in a lot of ways. They could have improved themselves. You know, drop passes is not, that's not Georgia doing anything. That's just South Carolina dropping passes and handing them a gift. You can't give good teams gift. They did that last year against Clemson by throwing a pick right to the guy and he took it to the house easy. Can't give good teams that. Can't have bad missed tackles like on Hunter Riffro. He already catches everything anyway. So you can't just have bad tackling and just let them get to the end zone that easy. You got to make teams work for it. And that's kind of another example in in the first drive by Georgia in the second half. They just ran through South Carolina like they weren't nothing. So, I mean, that's something that South Carolina has to get better at. They got to play more pride in these close games and play better fundamentally. And they got to, the coaching staff got to get these guys prepared better to compete in these games because, I mean, Jake Bailey going to have to have a good game, some good games coming up here on the road against some of these teams. Um, he's going to have to complete better against ranked teams and on the road and uh, some against his top these top teams left on the schedule. Even, even you know, I don't expect South Carolina to go in and, and win in Death Valley. I mean, let's be serious. Uh, 
South, I mean, Clemson's defense is, is, is a phenomenal, very athletic, very, you know, just a very good defense. You know, they're elite defense, especially up front. I mean, they may, they, they secondary can be suspect though. But, um, but, uh, as far as that D line and that, that's, that's just some tough sledding in, in, um, Death Valley for us to be able to overcome and get a victory there. But this is the thing. It gets to a certain point where some of these, where these players, where Bentley has the talent, you're going to have to have a game where you're just going to have to take it over. You're going, you're going, even if we don't win, but I mean, hopefully I want to somehow pull some crazy upset, but you're going to have to play a very, very solid, good game or a very, very, you know, you got to play a great game, not a solid game. You have to play a great game against one of these top teams. Don't want to leave this legacy being basically QB good against mediocre teams, but can't do nothing against the top teams, but it's not a, it's a team game. So I don't want to, I'm not singling out a single player, but that's the truth. That's what, that's, that's what, that's what I think. And that's the angle that I'm going to go at is that he's going to have to play some good games where you're going to have to do make some plays on your own and show that I'm ready for this moment. And, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't no fraud. I can be clutch. You know, you know what I mean? But also, we might want to get a running back in there. You might want to try Fenwick or Denson, somebody who can hit the hole quick. I think Tyson played pretty well. Um you know, but you got to get a bigger back in there who's going to be able to be a downhill runner and get the most yards possible. We don't need no dancing. Um, you need to hit the hole. You know what I mean? We need a run. We we need a runner back like Benny Snell. You know what I mean? Like he's a very very good back. You know who we're going to have to face. You know what I mean? So we're going to need a running back that's going to lean forward. It's going to hit the hole quick. Get the first down. I mean, sometimes our running backs looking like they just don't know where the first down marker is. Um, so hopefully we can get better in that department. But hey, you gotta try everybody. You gotta try Mon Denson and Fenwick. Fenwick look good as a true freshman and he has good size. I will put him in there and see what's up at the beginning of the game. If we're not able to get, you know, better production at the running back position against top talent good talent you ain't got the run for and I was a little high in my prediction a little high I was high in my prediction talking about 150 yards that's um that's pretty high against you know a defense at the caliber of Georgia so but at least get about 100 110 you need sometimes that's just effective enough for you for them to be able to respect the run and then you can um add another dimension to your offense but then again with that game I mean, of course, you, it's by far not Jake Bentley's fault because you're one-dimensional. He, he, we've been one-dimensional in every game where we have been one and six against ranked teams. We've been one-dimensional in every game. So, can't really blame the quarterback on that. I mean, that's a whole I – mean, there's a whole lot of aspects that needs to improve for the Gamecocks, and it starts with game planning. So, let's see. What else y'all wanna? What else do I wanna talk about here? And maybe just about it. You know, the fact that we don't have a game against Marshall um, is um, kind of gonna cut this podcast short. And it's really just a reaction to the Georgia game. You know what I mean? So, I mean, whatever y'all. You know what? That's it. All right, y'all have a good day. Y'all have a. You enjoy this Thursday night. Have a good day at work. And deuces. Peace out, Gamecock Nation. This concludes the M&M Show. Thanks for tuning in.